Tobago people. And I'm purposely not talking about just the, those of you who are members of the Tobago People's Party. Eh? I am talking to every single soul who is a Tobagonian. Because Tobago, we are at war. If you didn't know it before, you know it no. I spent 10 years in the United States going to school. And when I was there, I met a lot of people from a lot of different countries all over the world. I met a lot of them from a lot of the war-torn African countries. I met a lot of them who were in the United States because they were refugees, because they had to run and they had to fight. And one of the things that I used to stand proud and say is that Trinidad and Tobago, we have political freedom. We are the kind of country we are Calypsonian, could sing what they want about the prime minister. And the prime minister sit down right there and watching. We are the kind of the kind of country where you could have put on whatever color jersey you wanted for election, and then after election you go back because it's your brother, and it's your sister, and it's your husband, and it's your wife, and it's your entire family because all are we is one family. A couple weeks ago. I got up one morning and realized that the Trinidad and Tobago that I used to boast about no longer exists. You know, you heard about it. And then one day, I am at home, just reached home from work, and there is the knock on the door. And I had to ask myself, really? Is here we reach to be Gonians? We are at war. If you didn't recognize it before, you know it now. And then, last week, last week, I got a call from an officer in my division, the Division of Health, Wellness, and Social Protection. And the officer told me that they were just with police who had come to the division asking the division to produce all employment records for someone who has been employed solely for the purpose of propaganda at the Division of Health, Wellness and Social Protection. And the name of the employment record that they were looking for was Miss Zia Hackett. As if the whole of Tobago did not know that Zia and I are secretaries in the Tobago House of Assembly and we are secretaries because we were duly elected by the people of Tobago. Tobagonians, we are at war. And as I said, I'm not talking to TPP people. 
I am not talking to TPP people because I would have never thought that in 2023, this is where we would have been. But I understand why. The first time I got onto a political platform, welcome, Councillor Kerr. The first time I got onto a political platform was in 2016. It happened right home in my village when I was announced as the third candidate for an organization that I can't even call the name of anymore because it brings me so much pain. At that time, I thought I understood what this autonomy thing was about. Because I had actually spent the entire period between 2007 and 2016 participating in all of the consultations about autonomy that was happening in Tobago all of those years. I always liked politics, so I made it my business to learn about what the people of Tobago wanted. I understood what they wanted. So I was actually very happy when some of those people on the other side, let's call them the Red Devils, when they sent down a bill to Trinidad and said to Trinidad, we wore 200 miles or nothing. You all remember that? They were saying 200 miles or nothing. I actually have a video of the Minister of Tobago West. When she said 200 miles or nothing, Tobago must get what Tobago wants. 200 miles or nothing. So when they returned that bill to us. 2020, 2021, and it went back to the GSC. Remember, we are in the minority at that time, now getting into the executive. When I read the document, and you all have to listen to why we are at war. Eh? When I read the document, I recognized that the document that the Chief Secretary at that time, Mr. Orville London sent to Trinidad, was very different to the document that they were presenting to us. And when you read it closely, they gave us a short, short time. You see, they're trying to trick me. They gave us a very, very short time to read and to respond and to come before the JSC because they are trying to trick us. And then when we started reading the document, we thought, hmm. That, that is not it. You're right. It's many of the things that we knew was in the document suddenly came out. And I will give you two very easy examples. The first one has to do with equality of status. Because we want equality of status between the island of Trinidad and the island of Tobago. The document they said gives equality of status for the people in the island of Trinidad and the people in the island of Tobago. Now when you read it just so you're thinking to yourself that and song so bad. But then when you think about it the Constitution of Trinidad and Tobago already gives us equality of status for the people in the island of Tobago and the people in the island of Trinidad. We are all equals under the Constitution. But that is not what we wanted. We wanted equality of status between the island Trinidad and the island Tobago. And that is why we stood up against it. You hear them out there talking about if you had take it, you would have get the 6.9%. But they are tricking us, or at least 
they tried to trick us because if we did not stay up in the middle of the night to watch the document and read it over and over and over and realize a little word that they're slipping changed the whole meaning we would have been in a different story right now tobago we are at war let me give you one other example. You see this nice little stage in the sea? You see the sea out there? Do you know that the current Tobago House of Assembly gives us authority over up to six miles? Do you know that the version that they sent to us in 2020, 2021 was taken away even that? Did you all realize that? exactly and it's only when you read the legalese and you read the story and you really pay attention to the words that they put in it you see they were trying to dangle the little bit of money in front of us hoping that to be going stupid and that we can't read and that we don't understand but we were there to see what was in the document and to say to them no all of Tobago, all of Tobago, well, except the Red Devils, said, we did not want that. But we are at this point right now. Again, I'm talking to all of Tobago. Not TPP, yes. I'm happy. I am happy that we have the new color. And I am happy that we have the new symbol. And I am happy that I could call myself something other than independent now. But no, this is not about TPP. This is about Tobago. We are at the point now where a year and eight months they have seen more development on this island than they have done for the last decade at least we build more roads we do more surgeries we paid more gratuity we did all of that it in the one year and about eight months and that is what they are afraid of and imagine if we were able to do all of that in the middle of the whole set of bacchanal that was going on. If they did just leave me alone for me to work, what would we have accomplished? And that is why they are afraid. That is why they are now trained all of their guns figuratively and it seems at times literally on the people of Tobago. Tobago, Tobagonians, we are at war. You now need to decide what you are going to do. Are you going to Roll over, lay down, let it do what I want to you, or are you going to stand up and say, no, no more. As a matter of fact, you should get to the point that anytime you see a red jersey coming to you, you ain't even listening to what I say, and you're running them one time. Go from here. Go from here. Go from here. Go from here. Tobago. Tobago. Tobago people. You are at war. What are you going to do? I thank you. Against the walls of Babylon shall escape the wrath I come to poor. And I shall burn them and burn them continuously, for they never cease to oppress the poor. Oh, please, my.